Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how the Born technique for solid modeling can be used to improve the flexibility of your SOLIDWORKS models. I'll be using exercise 7-32 from the book Parametric Modeling with SOLIDWORKS 2012 by Randy Shi and Paul Schilling. We'll begin by looking at the geometry of the part that the exercise requests. This part is a connecting rod that joins the piston and the crankshaft in an engine. Since we know the functionality of this part, we can guess some of the critical dimensions and assign these values to global variables for use in our model. If I go up to Tools, and then Equations, we can see some of the global variables that I selected for this part. The first value uh, is the camshaft diameter, which is the size of the diameter on the right end of the part. The wrist pin diameter at one inch is the diameter of the left end of the part. And the kinematic length is the length from the center line to the center line of these two cylinders. The part itself can now be broken down into a variety of features. When I look at it, I see a general flat shape along here with two thickened bosses sticking out from it at each end. There are then two protrusions that accept bolts on this end and this end. And the rest is basically just cosmetic features. We have fillets and as well as a cut down the length of the connecting rod. Furthermore, there is actually symmetry in two planes here. Um, basically the horizontal plane and then a plane dividing this down the length. So let's explore how I actually created this part. If I roll back in the feature tree here, you can see that the first feature that I created was this flat piece along the top plane. And if we go to the sketch, you can see how I actually created this. So I located the part um, with the right side in the, the cylinder center on the origin of the, the um, coordinate system for this part. This makes my top plane um, in the middle of the part. My front plane runs right down the length of the part. And the right plane actually mates up to the right end of the part where I have a number of flat surfaces that I need to work with. You can also see my global variables. Uh, my six and a half inch kinematic length shows up. I use the global variable there. And my two inch diameter for the camshaft shows up here in the global variable. If I exit this sketch, we can now continue looking at the part. The next piece that I made is the cylinder boss okay, for the camshaft. And so basically I sketched on the top plane all right, and then I extruded from the, using the mid plane option uh, to get the thickened boss. And I actually extruded right through uh, my previous geometry so that it would be there uh, even if I hid or suppressed this feature. And you can see how that works. Moving along, I then added, by sketching on the right plane, I added the protrusion for bolting this up to the other half, which is not shown in the, in the exercise. We need two of those, so I then mirrored this about the front plane, and I now get an identical copy on the other side of the part. I can then suppress either one of these, as you can see, and I get the geometry that I expect when I do so. Moving further along, I then switch to the left hand side of the part. Again, I sketch on the, the top plane and I use no references to the previous geometry. I sketch a circle located, in fact, I'll go in and show you this. So I sketched a circle and then I referenced from the origin this six and a half inch kinematic length uh, I gave the circle the desired outside diameter, um, and again, I made no references to any of the previously existing geometry. If I exit this, I now have my boss on that side, which I need to cut through for the wrist pin cylinder. I do that, again, exactly the same way. I sketch on the top plane. I use the global variable for diameter. 
and then I cut through from the midplane in both directions. I can now do the cosmetic portions of my part. So I add a cut, and if you look at the moment, this cut was sketched only on one side of the part. So in order to do the other side, I used a mirror again over the top plane. This now gives me a cut on both sides of my part. The last thing that remains is to fillet the edges on the left hand boss. I add those fillets and my part is complete. Now we can examine how these things work uh, together uh, if we wanted to suppress, for example, one feature in the middle of the part tree without doing another one. So for example, if we want to remove our cosmetic feature, I can suppress this cut and as one would expect that the mirrored feature on the other side, which is dependent on it, is going to be suppressed as well. And we see that both of these features are now missing. If I reselect these and unsuppress them, we now get them back and you see that this works. Uh, also, by not making references, I can change the sizes, relative sizes of things. So in this case, I sketch this part and we can see now, if I can get a hold of it here, we can now see the dimensions associated with this part and grab it again. I could actually change the thickness of this maybe to 0.4 inches and regenerate. And you can see that now I have my bolt flanges are a little bit smaller than they were before. Um, because I didn't apply any specific references, I don't have to worry about these changing the thickness of the rest of my part. So now I can go and put these back. 0.5 inches, regenerate my part again, and we're back to our original part. Finally, if I wanted to suppress something more important, for example, the boss here, I could go select that in my feature tree. I could suppress that. And you see that none of the other features in the part are affected by it. So I've achieved my goal of making relatively independent features in my part. Finally, because I used the global variables and referenced everything to my global variables, I should be able to go into my uh, my part here and for example if we wanted to make a half inch change in the length of this part I could change the kinematic length to be seven inches hit OK and regenerate and SolidWorks has already done this for me so now my part is actually seven inches long instead of six inches you can see there's a little bit of a gap here um, based on the way that I located my cut. So this is an example of how you might use the Born technique to create a part. Hopefully now you can see how it allows you to build more flexible solid models and improve your modeling skills.